But before we do that, I know this is probably not the most burning news story of the day, and yet it just bothers me so much that I'm going to take the prerogative as host of the show to showcase it first, right out of the gate. Colin Kaepernick, the former NFL quarterback, hasn't been an elite player in a very long time, which is why he lost his job. I know he's got his own story on that. And now he's basically this racial grievance-mongering gadfly and attention seeker. That's his full-time job now. His latest foray into that realm is a graphic novel that he has collaborated on about his life because, according to Colin Kaepernick, nothing is more fascinating than his life and all the grave injustices that he, a multimillionaire, has had to weather in this awful, rotten country of ours that's been so terrible to him. So in this graphic novel, he's decided to sort of go down the Harry and Meghan path and criticize his own family. Because at some point you run out of material and victim stories to tell, especially when you're driving around in flashy sports cars and you've got tons of money and you're this giant celebrity. It's sort of difficult to play the victim all the time, although he certainly does it and does it in a very lucrative way. So in this graphic novel, he is going after his parents. He criticizes his own parents, his adoptive parents who took him in when he was a few months old. He was given up for adoption by his biological mother. The Kaepernick family took him in. They poured everything into him. They made him their son. And he very magnanimously says that he does know that they loved him. So that's generous of him. But I guess the love in return flowing back to his parents isn't quite strong enough to prevent him from publicly trashing them as kind of racist and problematic when he was growing up. And you just need material, right? I guess if this is your racket, if this is the way you're going to make money and get attention— You need to constantly dredge up new material. And if that means bad-mouthing and painting in a bad light your own freaking parents who adopted you and gave you everything and set you up for success in life in a loving, stable, wonderful family, I guess that's the cost of doing business for Colin Kaepernick. So here's what he said. This is Cut 29. This was on CBS promoting this graphic novel of his. Listen. It's his true high school coming of age story. His journey embracing his blackness despite resistance from many, including his white adoptive parents. I know my parents love me, but there were still very problematic things that I went through. I think it was important to show that, no, this can happen in your own home and how we move forward collectively while addressing the racism that is being perpetuated. He took cues from his icon, basketball star Allen Iverson, who he said wore his blackness like a suit of armor. And teenage Kaepernick wanted cornrows to match. He's getting what roles, his mom asked? Oh, your hair's not professional. Oh, you look like a little thug. Your mom said that to you. Yeah. And those become spaces where it's like, okay, how do I navigate this situation now? But... It also is informed why I have my hair long today. How do I navigate this situation now? Well, what you do, Colin, is you wait 20 years and then go on national television and attack your mom. Apparently, that's how you navigate it. All the problematic racism that can happen in your own home. I'm not saying that problematic things can't be said or done within families. And that people are blameless and that you should always just keep your mouth shut about everything. Like, I, I'm not saying that. I am saying just the, the ingrate vibes off of this guy are so strong. Does he hate his parents? I don't think he does. Who knows? I don't think he does. I think this is something like, you know, you got to dig deep and go out and paint them in a bad light. So you can have another victimhood story to sell and make money. That's what he's doing. 
I just think it's so gross and unseemly. He could have made it more vague. He could have said like, oh, I, you know, I had a friend or I had a relative who said this. No, but like he wanted to make it raw and real and talk about how awful his own parents were to him. Look at this racism happening to me in my own house. And let's talk about that in front of the nation. But it's also par for the course. Like This is how he operates. This is what he does. He lives in a country that's given him everything, including riches and fame and the ability, by the way, to get richer and more famous by running around criticizing the country because he has the freedom to do that. And unfortunately, there is a very successful, thriving cottage industry when it comes to criticizing America, within America, to Americans. There's a lot of people who will spend a lot of money for that. What a country. And rather than being grateful to this country that has given him everything, and rather than being grateful to his parents who gave him everything, his life could have gone a very different direction without their nurturing and support and their love, he decides to do both to America and to his parents the same thing. Criticize, attack, exploit. Now, part of the reason that I'm raising this is not just to go down the laundry list, although we could, right? The socks that he wore very publicly, portraying police officers as pigs. You think about the number of cops who have been targeted and shot and killed over the last couple of years, if I were less intellectually honest and less charitable, I could say he has blood on his hands by creating an environment and fostering a culture of hate against the police. That's the game that people like Colin Kaepernick play all the time when it comes to conservatives and rhetoric and other things, right? The climate of hate hand wringing only goes in one direction, it seems, when it comes to our moral betters in the media and elsewhere. We could talk about not just the kneeling. I have nuanced thoughts on the kneeling. I don't support it. I think you stand up, put your hand on your heart or your salute, and you thank God above that you live in this country. But I also wasn't, you know, screaming for these people to get fired. Although, interestingly, you had, you know, the uh, kneeling celebration committee at the NBA, a different sport. I mean, they made a whole big show of their commitment to anthem kneeling because they had to be pristinely woke in the NBA, but then the NBA was throwing American citizens out of American arenas for protesting against Chinese genocide during the U.S. national anthem. That's the same NBA, right? This is the type of thing that just drives me crazy. But it wasn't just the kneeling. It was the the socks, the pig socks. He called, Kaepernick did, because I guess he wasn't getting enough attention. So it's like, okay, again, this it's the Meghan Markle effect. Like, we're not getting enough attention. What do we do now? Oh, I know. It's July 4th. Let's call it a white supremacist holiday in support of a racist white supremacist country. Right when Kaepernick was making millions and was the star quarterback and all of that, he was out there on social media wishing people happy Independence Day, yay America, and then he's got a new business model, and he's like, look at this festival of white supremacy. That's something else that he did. The reason that I bring this up is not like I could care less about this guy. Part of me is like, why even talk about him for 15 minutes on the show? The thing with his parents, just it, it got me. It viscerally bothered me. But the bigger picture is I want to remind you the big, wealthy corporate interests who went rushing to enrich this man. Right. He lost out on a quarterback job. He was underperforming. He tells you it's because of racism and his speech and he was discriminated against or whatever. And so you have these big corporations who leftists typically hate but they want to score their DEI points and pay their indulgences to corporate America. So they said, I know, here's a way to shield ourselves 
from the woke left-wing critics, let's just shovel money at this guy. And if he calls cops pigs and calls America racist, all the better. Here's a bucket of cash from Nike. Believe in something, even if it means losing everything. That's, you know, something that they said, Nike. Was that the company whose CEO said that was a company like for, by, and of China? Or is that Disney? It's hard to keep those two straight sometimes. Disney also threw a bunch of cash at Colin Kaepernick and gave him a big production deal. I think he's making a Netflix movie, if I saw that. Spike Lee about the story of, oh, uh, imagine this, the exciting, thrilling, heroic tale of Colin Kaepernick. Is there someone else in his life that he would like to trash publicly for his own enrichment? Apparently there's no guardrails on that with him. Nike, that believes in nothing, right? Believe in something, they don't. They believe in Nike and money, although they're getting a little bit upset in Portland headquarters because of all the crime in Portland. And they're begging the city to get a handle on it and hire more police so they can actually, like, run their stores without looting and shoplifting and all of that. And Nike's just sort of living in the bed that they have helped to make in Portland. This is exactly the type of world that they've envisioned. Maybe not on purpose, but this is what they're creating. So enjoy that, Nike. I hope they consider their investment in Colin Kaepernick as a big spokesperson for their company. Remember, he was vetoing product lines. There were American shoes, like American flag, Betsy Ross sneakers that he vetoed as the effective CEO, Colin Kaepernick of Nike. No, that's too pro-America. Get rid of those. It's racist. So they said, yes, sir. When the Chinese Communist Party was angry that someone at the Houston Rockets had supported democracy in Hong Kong, what did Nike do? They said, oh, we're so sorry, China. We're going to take all the Houston gear out of our stores in China. Please don't hate us. What a profile and courage from that company disney and nike some of the worst in this country and of course they had the same instinct they saw kaepernick attacking the police attacking america and they said get that man millions on our dime asap talk about corporate values we see that from nike we see that from disney and I wonder what some of the other people propping this guy up and making him even more rich and even more famous, what they'll make of him going after his own parents this way. It's probably a feature, not a bug. Oh, he's going after a family, too. Good. Can we, re can we renew the contract? Can we pour some more cash into his bank account? Maybe we can have him set up with a little, you know, therapist so he can mine some more microaggressions from his childhood so he can bestow those upon the rest of the country in his next book or whatever he's doing movie deal or what have you what a life only in america that's the lack of gratitude Ugh. may i never ever go down this kind of path would you want your kid to turn out this way? The cornrows and the hairstyle, the least of his problems. But unfortunately, the problems, I think most people would look at this and say, that's not good. The problems are rewarded. The incentive structure is largely broken. And say what you will about Colin Kaepernick, he understands that and he's exploiting it. And he's got enablers. Wonder how his parents feel today.